Are you noticing that you gotta whip out the old phone line and reading glasses and restaurants to read the menu? Or maybe you're trying to figure out a way you can add a few inches to your arm so you can hold your phone further away to get it more clear. In this video, I'm going to go through all the different treatment options we have for presbyopia. I'll discuss all the latest and greatest medications and procedures that are out there. And at the end of the video, I'll also discuss some of the exciting new technology in the pipeline that can really change the way we approach presbyopia going forward. Let's first quickly discuss what presbyopia is and why it occurs. When we're all younger, such as in our teens and 20s, our eyes have the ability to autofocus. So for example, if we're looking at something far away, then want to focus on something up close, look at what happens to the lens inside our eye. The lens, it's flexible. It's able to change its shape so that we can keep those close objects in focus. We have a special muscle called the ciliary muscle that has special hair-like attachments to the lens called zonules. As the ciliary muscle contracts and relaxes, it causes the lens to change its shape and its focus point. Throughout the day, the ciliary muscle, the zonules, and the lens are all working together so that the lens can constantly change its shape, allowing us to keep everything in focus. This process is called accommodation. As we all age though, the lens begins to harden and it's not as flexible as it was when we were younger. So we lose this ability of autofocus or accommodation. This is called presbyopia. Most people begin to develop presbyopia around age 40. And that's why as we all get to our 50s and older, we start needing reading glasses to see things up close. Now, the development of presbyopia is a normal aging process, and unfortunately, there's no magic pill or eye drop currently that can reverse the process. But there are a variety of effective and safe solutions besides reading glasses that allow us to still see up close even as we all get a little bit older. Let's go through these treatments one by one. The first treatment options we'll talk about are multifocal and monovision contact lenses. Normal contact lenses have one focus point, and so they're called monofocal contact lenses. Mono meaning one and focal meaning focus point. So monofocal means one focus point. If a patient with presbyopia wears regular monofocal contact lenses, then they'll have clear vision for one visual zone. For example, distance vision. But since that focus is set to distance vision, if they want to read up close or do something that requires near vision, they'll need to put on a pair of reading glasses. Now, multifocal contact lenses are contact lenses with special designs that give people multifocal, multiple focus points, allowing you to see more clearly at different visual zones, such as distance and near. It sounds great, right? Multifocal contact lenses give a larger range of vision so we can decrease our dependence on reading glasses. But there are some drawbacks that we need to be aware of. Because of the design of the lenses and the multiple focus points, some patients have mentioned to me that they see ghosting or hazy vision when they try these contact lenses. So they don't work for everyone. For many patients, their brains adapt and they're eventually able to focus on the correct focus point, whether it be near or far vision. But for some people, it is very difficult or impossible to adjust to the multifocal lenses. And this adjustment process usually takes days to weeks. The other drawback with these lenses is that they're designed to basically split the light coming into our eyes into a near focus and a distance focus. Generally, depending on the brand and the specific design and power of the multifocal contact lens, the amount of light that's focused onto the near point versus the far point will differ. One brand or type of multifocal lens might give you better near vision, but then also more hazy distance vision. Alternatively, a different brand might give you better distance vision, but then your near vision isn't quite as good as you want it to be. And so sometimes it can take a little bit of trial and error until you find the one that works best for your eyes, your brain, and your lifestyle. Another thing to consider is that these multifocal lenses are usually more expensive than regular soft contact lenses. Having said that, I've had patients that love multifocal contact lenses and swear by them. So if multifocal contact lenses sound like an appealing option to try, some of the more popular ones we use are Cooper Vision Biofinity Multifocals and AccuView Oasis Multifocal Contact Lenses. The next contact lens option we'll talk about for presbyopia is monovision. Now, with monovision contact lenses, we're using the typical single focus contact lenses, but we set up the prescription so that one eye's focus is set to distance and the other eye's focus is set to near. This way, we can use both eyes together and we have a larger range of vision and decreased dependence on reading glasses. But this larger range of vision does come at a cost. First, monovision usually requires an adjustment period because our brain needs to adapt to one eye being able to see far and one eye being able to see near. Our brain needs to learn and adapt to favor input from one eye over the other depending on whatever task we're doing. Some people can adjust to monovision quickly after a day or two, but some people, for whatever reason, are just unable to adjust even after several weeks of trying. So it's not for everyone. The other drawback with monovision is that since we need simultaneous input from both eyes for great 3D vision and depth perception, 
In monovision, we usually have decreased depth perception. So depending on what you do for work or what hobbies you like to do, that decreased depth perception might be a deal breaker for monovision for you. But just like multifocal contact lenses, I've had many patients with a mono vision setup with their contact lenses who absolutely love the increased range of vision with decreased dependence on reading glasses. And they mentioned that they really don't have much problems at all adjusting to the different focus points between the two eyes and no problems with depth perception. So everyone's results will vary. And then when the time comes for cataract surgery, these patients who are used to the monofocal contact lenses strongly prefer to keep their mono vision. So I implant intraocular lenses with specific powers to give them that monovision. So one eye set for distance and the other eye set for near, permanently, without glasses or contact lenses, and they're super happy and satisfied with it. Okay, moving on from the contact lenses, the next option to consider for presbyopia are eye drops. Now, in terms of eye drops for presbyopia, there's actually only one FDA approved option available in the US, and that's Vuity. Vuity is the brand name for 1.25% pilocarpine, and it was approved by the FDA in 2021. Pilocarpine actually isn't a new medication, and it's been used in ophthalmology as a glaucoma treatment for decades. Basically, how Vuity or pilocarpine works is it constricts the pupil. This induces what's called the pinhole effect. When the pupil is smaller or constricted, it blocks out peripheral rays of light and narrows the beam of light that eventually lands on our retina. This narrowing of the light entering the retina increases the depth of field so both near and distant objects can appear sharper even in patients with presbyopia. You can actually create a pinhole effect for yourself pretty easily. All you have to do is curl your fingers so that there's a small hole or a pinhole made by your finger. When you look through it, you'll probably see that some objects which are fuzzy may appear sharper or clearer. So Vuity eye drops can be a nice option for patients who don't want to deal with reading glasses, but there are some drawbacks to consider with the eye drop. First, it's temporary. The effects of the eye drop will vary from person to person, but it's usually in the range of about six hours. So you need to put in a drop twice or three times each day to get that pinhole effect throughout the day. Another drawback is that since your pupil is constricted, you're literally cutting down the amount of light that passes through your eye into your retina. So that may diminish your vision, particularly in low light conditions. Then there's the side effects. Some patients, and I've seen this in my practice, report that these drops can cause eye fatigue or throbbing headaches or eye pain and can't tolerate the eye drops. There have also been a few case reports showing an association between the use of pilocarpine eye drops with retinal tears and retinal detachments, which are serious vision-threatening conditions. And the last point to consider with these eye drops is cost. These eye drops are not covered by insurance, and from the latest information I have, a 2.5 milliliter bottle of Vuity, which is enough for one drop a day in both eyes for about a month, costs around $90. Okay, so the next possible solution we have for presbyopia are refractive lens exchange or cataract surgery. A refractive lens exchange is a surgery in which we take out the natural lens inside the eye and replace it with an intraocular lens or IOL. With cataracts, the lens inside the eye has become cloudy and this usually occurs with aging. Now, the surgical process between refractive lens exchange and cataract surgery is actually the same. In cataract surgery, we also remove the natural lens in the eye and then implant an intraocular lens into the eye. Basically, if the lens inside your eye is still clear, then the surgery is considered a refractive lens exchange and it's usually not covered by insurance. But with cataract surgery, if the cataract is considered visually significant, meaning that it's severe enough to interfere with your activities of daily life, then a portion of the surgery may be covered by insurance. Either way, the way we can address presbyopia with lens exchange or with cataract surgery is that we typically use special lenses such as extended depth of field lenses, such as the Vividi or Symphony lenses, or multifocal lenses such as the Panoptics lens, which can provide a wider range of vision. The special design of these implanted lenses allow them to deliver a wider range of vision compared to a monofocal or single focus lens. And although the majority of people who receive these lenses are satisfied with their vision after surgery, there are still some drawbacks we need to consider. One is surgical risk. With any surgery, there's risk of complications. There's risk of developing dry eyes, floaters, retinal tears or detachments, infection, needing more surgery, as well as the risk of not getting that perfect vision you were hoping for. Like the multifocal contact lenses we discussed earlier, these implanted multifocal or extended depth of field lenses may cause few patients to have hazy vision. And in certain lenses, such as the Symphony lens or the Panoptics lens, these lenses have concentric rings etched into the lens to deliver a wider range of vision. A side effect of this design is that patients will see rings or halos around lights, particularly at night, and it can be bothersome for some patients. Another surgical lens option for treating presbyopia is monovision. 
With this approach, during lens exchange or cataract surgery, when we implant the lenses, we implant one eye with a lens set for distance, and the other eye receives a lens implant set for near vision. So it's a similar setup to the monovision contact lenses like we mentioned earlier. By having two eyes set for different visual zones, we can deliver a wider range of clear vision. But like the drawbacks of the monovision contact lens approach, when we do monovision lens surgery, there are some patients whose brains can't adapt to the differing focus points between the two eyes, and there can be a decrease in depth perception as well. But for many patients who receive the monovision with their lens implants, they're really happy with the increased range of vision and the decreased dependence on reading glasses. Okay, before we go through the next option for treating presbyopia, as well as the exciting new technology in the pipeline, I wanted to tell you about my optimized newsletter. If you want to get the latest science-backed information on how to improve your vision and health delivered straight to your email, you can visit my website at michaelchuamd.com to sign up. Okay, the next treatment option we'll discuss for presbyopia is monovision LASIK surgery. Now, in LASIK, surgeons use a laser to create a thin flap of the cornea or the transparent front surface of the eye. Here's an example of a LASIK flap. You can see that there's a hinge here that hasn't been cut. So now the surgeon can fold back the flap of corneal tissue and then use a laser to precisely remove microscopic amounts of corneal tissue to reshape it to correct the patient's eye prescription. Then the flap is laid back into place. And so with monovision LASIK, the surgeon would use LASIK to set one eye for distance and the other eye for near vision. This again gives a greater range of clear vision and a decreased need for reading glasses. Now, there's a few drawbacks to using LASIK for treating presbyopia, and I generally don't recommend it, at least as a method for presbyopia treatment. First, remember that presbyopia is primarily due to changes in lens flexibility as we age. Also, as we get older, cataracts are beginning to develop. Since LASIK involves primarily altering the shape of the cornea, we're not really addressing the lens changes that are occurring as we age. And so even if you get LASIK done, your presbyopia and cataract will still continue to progress and you'll still have to address the cataract at some point. The other thing to consider is that once you've had LASIK surgery done, when you eventually need to do cataract surgery, that process becomes a little bit more difficult for your eye surgeon to choose the correct lens for you. This is because when we plan cataract surgery for patients, we use precise eye measurements and lens formulas that help us predict which lens will work best in your eye but many of these formulas were developed assuming normal eye anatomy, meaning a cornea that has not been reshaped with LASIK. Now, we do have special formulas and adjustments we can make to account for patients who have had a history of LASIK, but still, multiple studies and surgeon experiences, including my own, have shown us that the post-operative cataract surgery outcomes for patients with a history of LASIK is a bit more unpredictable compared to patients who have not had a history of corneal refractive surgery. Also remember that the same drawbacks of monovision apply. Whether it be through contact lenses, intraocular lenses, or LASIK, your brain has to be able to adapt to the two eyes with different focus points, which some people may not be able to do, and there can be decreased depth perception as well. Another drawback to consider with LASIK is dry eye. The incidence of chronic dry eye varies depending on the study you read, how much of a prescription was treated, and how much corneal tissue was removed, but several studies have reported rates in the 20 to 30% range. And not to mention, aging is one of the most common risk factors for dry eye as well. So performing LASIK on patients who are a little bit older and may have higher baseline risk for dry eye already makes it a more risky proposition. And the thought is, when you're performing LASIK, you're making this circular flap and removing corneal tissue. We have to remember that there's also nerves innervating the cornea, and as the laser is applied to this large surface area of the cornea, we're also cutting off these nerves as well. These corneal nerves are critical for maintaining our normal, healthy tear film to moisturize our eyes. So when these corneal nerves get transected during LASIK, then there's an increased risk of developing dry eye. Okay, now that we covered what options are out there besides reading glasses for treating presbyopia, from contact lenses to viewity eye drops to lens and corneal surgeries, Let's now go through some of the exciting new technology that may be available in the upcoming years for patients hoping to decrease their reliance on reading glasses. First, we'll talk about a new procedure called laser scleral microporation. In scleral microporation, surgeons use a special laser called a YAG laser to create small holes or micropores in the sclera to make it more stretchy and elastic. The theory is, the flexibility of our ciliary muscle plays a role in our ability to accommodate or autofocus. Let's remember that as the ciliary muscle contracts and relaxes, it pushes and pulls on the lens through small hair-like structures called zonules. This causes the lens to change its shape and focusing power, allowing us to have that ability of accommodation or autofocus. Now, the ciliary muscle is anchored to the sclera or the white part of the eye. And the thought is, as we get older, our sclera becomes more stiff and rigid. And since the ciliary muscle is anchored to the sclera, 
As the scleroma becomes more rigid as we age, the ciliary muscle has a decreased ability to flex back and forth to push on the lens. So the idea behind laser scleral proration is that by lasering little holes into the sclera, we can restore the flexibility of the sclera and give the ciliary muscle more freedom to contract and stretch back and forth. The laser is still under development and in the experimental phase, but researchers are also developing and using an AI-assisted algorithm to create a customized treatment plan for each patient to determine the specific laser parameters for each treatment, like the number of laser pulses and the depth of scleral alteration. The next exciting new technology for treating presbyopia are a class of intraocular lenses called accommodating intraocular lenses. The current intraocular lenses we use in cataract surgery are rigid and have fixed areas of focus. These newer accommodating lenses, such as the Juvene lens or the OmniView IOL, have special designs which feature some flexible component in the lens, allowing the lens to respond to movements of the ciliary muscle to deliver basically pseudo-accommodation to patients. These lenses are still in the clinical trial phase, but early results from studies on these lenses have been promising. For example, in a three-year study, the patients who received the Juvene IOL achieved uncorrected vision of 2018 at distance, 2025 at intermediate, and 2035 at near when it was implanted in one eye, and the results were even better when it was implanted in both eyes. In a different study, six months after implantation of the OmniView lens, patients achieved uncorrected vision outcomes of 2020 vision at distance, 2025 at intermediate range, and 2032 for near vision. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done from these companies before the lenses become available to the general public. But if these lenses continue to deliver safe and effective results for patients, as their clinical trials would suggest, then these would be an exciting new option for patients hoping to decrease the reliance on reading glasses. Okay, the last group of new treatment options on the horizon for presbyopia are medications. Several new medications are in the pipeline for presbyopia treatment, offering hope for reducing reliance on glasses and improving near vision. In addition to Vuity, which is pilocarpine, there are other eye drops in various stages of clinical development. There's Brimacol PF, which is a drop that's currently in phase three clinical trials. Brimacol PF is a preservative-free formulation which consists of carbacol and bromonidine, which both work together to constrict the pupil. And like we mentioned before, when the pupil is smaller, we have that pinhole effect, which allows us to see a greater range of vision. Carbacol is a medication that we eye surgeons have used for many years. If we need to make the pupil smaller during eye surgery, we can inject carbacol into the eye to constrict the pupil. From my experience, patients can experience a feeling of eye pressure or headaches with carbacol use. So I would not be surprised if this side effect is reported once the eye drop Brimacol PF is released. The other half of Brimacol or Brimonidine is a popular glaucoma medication that's commonly prescribed. A low concentration of Brimonidine is also found in the over-the-counter eye redness eye drop Lumify. So it has been tested and used on real world people for many years. Another presbyopia eye drop in the pipeline is acyclidine. Now, like pilocarpine, acyclidine has historically been used, particularly in Europe, for the treatment of glaucoma. And like pilocarpine, acyclidine also has a pupil constricting effect, which helps to deliver that pinhole effect to help patients with their near vision, even without reading glasses. Phase two clinical trials have been positive, showing that patients enjoyed improved near vision for about 10 hours after using the drop. Acyclidine has now moved on to larger and longer phase three clinical trials to further examine its safety and efficacy. So putting everything together, we see that there are a wide range of options currently available to help us decrease our reliance on reading glasses as we get older. From contact lenses to eye drops to surgery, there are many possible treatments and each with their own pros and cons as well as costs. I think the ideal solution in a perfect world would give us that true ability of accommodation back with a low side effect profile. Unfortunately, that treatment isn't available yet, but as you can see, there are many researchers and scientists around the world that are pouring in their time, their energy, and money into figuring out how they can come up with better solutions in the future. And as new updates become available, I'll make sure to share them with you. And if you live in the Los Angeles, Orange County, or Inland Empire area and want to get your eyes checked out, or if you want to talk about the best ways we can help you with your presbyopia, feel free to visit our website or give our phone number a call to make an appointment today. And if you made it this far into the video, that means you're really interested in learning more about the newest technology in vision and eye care. You can watch my video here to get an in-depth review of those exciting new accommodating intraocular lenses that may change the way we approach refractive eye surgery forever. I'm Dr. Michael Chua with Planet Hills Eye Care. See you next time.